and now we will also switch to English for a while. So I will uh, welcome Dita Angarini, uh, who will present the next pre um, presentation. Your uh, now I all don't have the title in English, but Dr. And your uh, PhD. Sorry, yeah. yes, that's the word at KTH, and you will tell us about a project that you're also starting right now about EVs. Yeah, exactly. Thank, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Sorry to use English. Um, so, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity given to me to present the project that we are doing together at Electric Power and Energy System Division at KTH. And uh, my name is Tita. I am a PhD student with uh, Mikhail Emlin and Leonard Soder as my supervisors. And this project is actually funded by Energy Min Dikheta. So, um, the project that we're doing about um, business models, models for EV charging, uh, considering the grid capacity, is based on this fact that actually now we do have um, EV cells in Sweden, which is very rapidly growing over time. And it can be projected that it will grow even more in the future because every everyone is like uh, supporting it. And, um, Data from Power Circle even like stated that last year, December, Sweden has had over half a million EVs already in different type of uh, cars. And if we aggregate all the batteries, it can make up to 11,500 megawatt hour, which is a huge capacity. The question is, how, how can we use this? And we already listened a lot of uh, different ideas and projects, which are like a bit similar with this one. But we do know that um, in the Nordic power system, traditionally, to, to address the capacity limitations that we have in the transmission and also distribution network, um, the power system is balance with conventional flexibility, such as the microhydro and then stationary batteries and other uh, flexibility. And we have a lot of EVs coming. So it will put actually more pressure on it. But because if we have um, batteries, so then it also open opportunities because they, they have a lot of opportunities to offer flexibility in different ways and in different business models. And this is what we're looking uh, in our project. So the PhD project that we're doing is to develop technical and also market-based tools and to obtain efficient and flexible use of EV batteries at capacity limitations in the grid. And uh, because this project is just started like a couple months ago last year, and uh, we have like five years spent. Uh, so we are now brainstorming and initiating like different ideas what will work and we will investigate them more into modeling and also simulation and test them uh, with, a real, with, with a real case. And now we're partnering with Elevio and hopefully in the future we can, we can partner more with other uh, pa partners. So just to get um, a discussion, we can, we can uh, see a simple business model here. Just imagine uh, uh, residential areas with different active customers in that owning EVs. And uh, there is an option now that we can do uncontrolled charging where we can just like plug in whenever we want after work or whenever we want. Uh, or if we work together with like probably aggregator and then they can offer uh, service to to smart charging, uh, and then they 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 um, they buy the electricity from the retailers. So this is a simple model. So if everyone just do uncontrolled charging, where they plug their EVs like whenever they want, it is going to be likely that people will charge during the peak load when the, everyone comes from home. And if this happened, then we cannot, we cannot accommodate the growing number of EVs uh, without grid reinforcement, which is very expensive. And that's why uncontrolled charging cannot happen in the future. We need something else. And now smart charging is introduced, and then there are businesses that offer smart charging. But at the moment, um, 
we don't have enough EVs yet in our system that makes the grid is uh, having problems yet, but it will come in the future when we have more and more EVs. So what's problematic about, uh, not problematic, but what the challenge about smart charging? So we can imagine here if people uh, do smart charging more, but in the algorithm on the smart charging, they don't, co they don't consider the grid limitations. So uh, it will likely that everyone will charge together when the price is low and we can create like new additional peak loads that is not happening before. And it is actually more challenging than uncontrolled charging. So uh, this just to show that it is very important to consider the grid limit on the algorithm for smart charging and other business models. And then this means that we do need everyone, all the stakeholders in the electricity market to communicate with each other. Because for example here, um, if the smart charging algorithm consider the grid limit and then they talk each other with the system operators, then we can mitigate like the problem that can happen in the grid, like grid congestion or voltage fluctuation or overload. And the most important thing is we can defer and postpone um, the grid reinforcement, which is expensive, and we want to optimize that. But when we talk only about smart charging, this is not only to minimize the cost for the customers. There are a lot of opportunities and also potential that they can have. Um, and um, there are other business models that now we discuss, but maybe it's not yet implemented. And uh, in the future, we imagine that everyone can like uh, participate in this different business models, maybe in parallel. So how can this different business model happen together? This is what we're going to do in the next, I mean, this is what we're going to study in the next like four years and all. And um, if we imagine our future electricity market, there are different stakeholders, there are different actors, and there are different flows in the system. There is this energy, and then we also have the flexibility flowing. Then where are the money flowing? Then what are the communication flowing? And what should they communicate? What information they need to each other, they need to share. They, they need someone to give them from the SOC, the batteries, and then maybe the grid limit. Um, how can they balance them together if everyone if everyone doing different business model? So it is not a trivial case, and it is a complex system that we need to solve together. And um, I hope that uh, from this project, uh, I can share the progress of the research someday in the future, and we can give some like recommendations. So actually, uh, to summarize about this project, we do know that uh, the, the, the EV gives like can create adverse impact to the grid, but EVs also bring opportunities and offer flexibility that if we solve, it can transform into like different um, ideas to help the grid. And uh, our future works will be investigating this and building models and also simulations to test this. And hopefully uh, we can compare different scenarios and then provide recommendations. Um, and that's all uh, from me. And thank you so much for listening. If you have any ideas or suggestion from the project, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Dita. It was very interesting. I'm looking forward to this as well. There's a lot of actors that needs to be involved in this future uh, electricity systems with EVs. And do you have any, you said you have a partner with Delivio. No. Is there any like other type of actors that you would like to have in your project going forward? Yeah, you yeah, of course, maybe? like um, in the future, we would love to like uh, work together with different actors like aggregators and then the, of course, the energy inspectorate probably. Uh, and then the Tokmar to Enerhim in the Hattan as well. So all the actors that um, are happening, that are working in the electricity market, we believe that that we, that the business models will be not easy to decide, and then we need to like discuss together. And uh, this research is prob probably like um, discussing problems that can happen like in the.
future. So it's not happening no. yet now. So it will be very nice to talk more as well to uh, other researchers, not only from the university, but like RISE and um, different uh, research institutes. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. So if anyone are interested, you can take contact with you, Dita. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So thank you so much, Dita. I will, we will uh, close this uh, session with thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah.